Hey y'all, it's me, Ren, back again for another adventure. It's an exciting new day. We have completed, in Monster Prom, we've completed all of Green's Polaroid gatches. I'm just going to go in here and look at this again. So we've got our steamy memories with Damien. No words needed with Liam. Miranda is the princess to my castle. Polly's my kind of danger. And we'll always have each other's rears with Scott. And you are life to my afterlife. Um, uh, my stream keeps restarting and that's bogus. But we're back here. It's me, Ren. Back for another adventure. The adventure of getting my stream working. Even with all these kibbits. <sighs> well, alright. Let's just do what we can. Okay. So we've got all of red and we've got all of yellows. At least with the main six characters who we're still trying to catch them all. We're still missing Vera on the regular style success. And we can still afford to lose with Damien and Scott. They haven't dumped us yet. So, all right, let's go. We get to be the blue person today. All right, we're going to play. Uh, we're still going to be one player, and we're going to go ahead and pick the short game. Uh, spooky High School, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant. Sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. We're blue! Let's see. Who should... What What should we... Hmm. Blen? Hmm. Does that work? Maybe... Maybe just Bren? Yeah, let's go with Bren. All right. Okay, Bren. And Bren is going to be another they, them. Just because they've got, they've got the button down on. They've got the uh, gender non-specific button down. All right, let's go. Sweet. Sweet. Da, 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 da. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. Picking a character just completely removes me from the sentence that we're in the middle of, but, you know, it's cool. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. <laughs> Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. <sighs> Liam DeLinecourt, 400 and something, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! <gasps> Polly Geist, 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom Stupidest Pop Quiz Ever! All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom Stupidest Pop Quiz Ever, TM. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers, alchemy-like, into your character stats. Yeah, biting on other moves. 
This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Oh, I haven't gotten this one in a while. I don't think I've gotten this one on stream yet. If you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? The curse of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets that feel the need to explain them in detail. You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old fashioned way by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. I'd curse them to fall in love with a wonderful person and be happily married for years before they realized that all this time, their partner was a wild panther in disguise. Then the panther viciously devours my enemy. Classic. All right, so this last one is the one that's featured in this little picture here. Can you imagine, hey honey, there's something you need to know. I'm a wild panther in disguise. I'm... I'm just a peacoat full of rats. Okay, what are we gonna do? The whole world is open to us. We have so many options now. Because we're blue, we're Bren, and we're dating everyone. Okay. Um... Let's go ahead and be hands-on. I mean, we're, we're a go-to. We're not gonna trust anybody else to get the work done. We're gonna do it ourselves. Yeah, so smart. Radiation poisoning. Yeah. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A swan. They're classy. Plus, it reminds me of that myth of Lita and the swan. So, at least by bestiality standards, it has a certain chic appeal. A human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes in stupid questions like this one. A great white shark. If I have to fuck an animal, let's at least make it a story worth telling. Um... Let's fuck a shark. So charming. So smooth. Much like sharks. Lol. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. Anything on fire. Or a weapon. No, no. A weapon on fire. The head of their fiercest enemy. The abstract concept of gratefulness. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sort. A silly toy that makes silly noises. A pony. Always a pony. Um, I'm gonna go with... Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the abstract concept of gratefulness because I'm actually really bad at gifts. Like... I just want to give them to the people as soon as I get them for the people. So things like anniversaries and birthdays mean nothing to me. It's just, I, I saw this and thought of you and I love you every day. So here. So yeah, abstract concept of gratefulness. If you give me something on a special day, then I will be like, oh, it's a special day. Okay, that's cool. I love you. Maybe I wouldn't tell you specifically that I love you because I am not currently married to you, everyone. Da -da 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 -da. But I would. Oh, this loading screen is always so long. And now my new giant monitor has like a surface that is less reflective, so I can't even stare at my own eyes in the reflection of the monitor during that. Oh, she has her little. Oh. Oh, her little symbol had little little bolts on it because she's the Frankenstein lady. Her name is Vicky. Or Victor. Or Victor Frankenstein. So good. All right, let's see. Our creativity got bit and so did our fun. Let's go to the auditorium first. Oh, look at her. She's a little musketeer. There's a little horse. A little horse with a little shield. So cute. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. Groovy music. You're bored and doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. A wild Damien appears. Oh. What the fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Hmm? 
Am I cuddling shirtless with Liam? Yo, dude, I ship it. What? Loser. Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me one good reason not to cuddle your face with my fists. Oh no. They discovered your erotic fan art of them. You can't think of any way to calm down the both of them. But maybe the right answer can calm down one of them. What the fuck is this? This fuckery, dear Damien, is art. I present to you, Yowie. Don't be silly. You don't want to fight me. You're clearly fighting against your urge for cuddling. Huh. Um, I'm gonna go with art. My creativity is six. It's our first session. I should be able to, I should be able to do this. Let's see what happens. What, what the fuck is this fuckery is Yowie? Yeah, so creative. Calm down, Damien. You're such a bigot. I've heard about this yaoi. It's a millinery form of art from the East, is it? Oh, Japan is in the East. A delightful celebration of love and desire. What? So authentic. And I must admit, this piece is full of raw talent. Look at the strokes, the expressions, the suggestive placement of the hand. The big yaoi hand, right? It conveys so much with so little. Dude, are you high? Look at this other one! You're fucking pregnant! This is insanity! It's not insanity, but neither is this one exactly yaoi. It's impreg. Behold, what a way of standing up against the gender status quo. They're changing the world one pregnant doodle at a time. I'm out. No! There is no way you can convince me this shit isn't weird or wrong or problematic. I'm out of this plotline. All right, so here's the thing. In the context of this game, these are real people. Don't do fanfic of real people. Now, in the concept of me playing this game, it would be totally acceptable for me to do yaoi fanfic of these people. I probably won't, but the option is available to me without being creepy, in my opinion. Ignore him, Bryn. I've been searching for the pinnacle of art for generations. Little did I know it was here all along, in the ancient form of Yaoi. Will you accept me as your student? May I call you Sensei? I think this is a three-part plan, like, right off the bat. I think this is a good thing. You gain two creativity and one smarts. Groovy doovy doo, groove groove. Keep that groove up. Let's Keep go. that groove up. Yeah, look, she has little bolts. She had little bolts and... Cute little blushes. So good. All right, we want a stat pump. Hey, Coven, how you doing? I'm still not sold. I don't know, I've, I don't have the best voice for joy yet. You're enjoying your meal in peace when you hear the unmistakable sound of three throats clearing. Ahem, ahem, ahem. Yes, hello. As you know, it is customary for a benevolent witch coven to have as an ally, a malevolent creature of some sort. And since Liam has apparently decided he's too cool for us now, I mean, because of your incredible resume and good looks, We're here to save the day. we have decided to accept you on a trial basis as our supernatural companion for one adventure. Adventure not to exceed three episodes or eclipse the main plot arc. As a consideration for your willing participation, we'll even allow you your choice of adventures. Three episodes? You could knock out one of these adventures by the end of lunch. It actually sounds fun. The coven gives you two options. Stop the crime ghost who's been taking over children's bodies and using them to rob banks. You have a never before seen plan. Take on the greatest villain of all, income inequality. Okay, we want creativity out the wazoo for, for being a yaoi master. That's plus. Plus that. You put a stop to the crime ghosts. Crime in the only way you know how. With fake beards. It's working! Now that all the children have fake beards, the crime ghost can't tell their children. He's got no one to possess. 
Yep, that was totally your plan. You definitely didn't just start slapping beards on kids and hope for the best. Excellent. This day is saved once again thanks to the coven and our faithful sidekick, Bren. <gasps> What's that? You wanted to know about payment? We're sorry, but the contract clearly states that this is an unpaid internship. Uh, the contract does say that. Oh well, at least you gained four creativity for your lateral thinking. Lateral thinking for fake beards. There's lots of fake beards in this game. Let's go. Well, there's at least two sets of fake beards. The ones that I have and then Polly has some for when she wants to play a dwarf, I guess. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? We're not any fun right now. Let's go at least get her a fun above five. Go party. Oh, look, look at her shake that beauty. Yeah. Bump it. Pop it. Bump it. Spin it. Slide it. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. Da, 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 da. Later that night, you head out to the club with Polly and Liam. Using your fake IDs, also known as Polly's boobs, you have no problem getting in the door. The real trouble begins when you get to the bar and Polly starts teasing Liam. Lame. I'm telling you, boy, you've got no game. And I'm telling you that I reject the ludic sexual paradigm underlying your assertion. All I'm saying is that if you're really as cool as you act all the time, hmm. you should have no problem getting digits from that gender indeterminate locust horn down at the end of the bar. Uh. Well, of course I could. If I wanted to. But you see, the key to my allure is that I don't want anything. Sounds to you like Liam's just scared. You decide to go over there and show them both how it's done by coating yourself in insect pheromones? Don't go after people. Make people go after you. Dancing so hard that you also separate into a cloud of locusts. Uh, let's try this one. Our fun's at six. I think this has got to be... Because uh, I've already done this one before and I want to live large. So let's do a dance. Are we ready? <gasps> oh, good. It's so fun. Okay. You dance until your body is a swarm of locusts. This is no problem for you. The hot young locust swarm at the end of the bar is impressed. And so is Paul. Oh, whoops. I forgot this is one of those lock... This is... I don't think I'm locked in with Liam yet, and so I accidentally switched over to Polly with this. Oh, well. See, Liam? All you gotta do is dance until it physically alters the composition of your body. What? I can only turn into bats. Uh, probably not a good match for a swarm of locusts. What's going on here? What's going on on your arm here? Is that where you bite yourself? Or is that some nouveau piercing? No, you don't have any piercings. What is that? It's your, it's your bite mark? Blah. Or rather, bat. One bat. Not even a swarm. <laughs> Aw, it's alright, dude. We can't all be totally flippin' awesome. While Polly comforts Liam, you manage to secure a party for afterwards at the Locust Swarm house. Even a couple of rich mummies from out of town join. At school the next day, everyone at school is talking. Whoop. Everyone at school at school the next day is talking about how you can apparently turn into bugs. Awesome. You gain two fun and one charm. Well, whoops. I gotta switch back to Liam. I, I might not have a chance before lunch. Uh-oh. Alright, what do we want? Um... Let's be charming. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. Look at her. She's gonna throw it with all her might. You gain two charm. Groovy. Someone taps you on the shoulder hesitantly. You turn around to see Liam. He's carrying a brand new notebook and a very Japanese pencil case. Awesome! It is the three-parter. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got it. Okay. It, it really jumped up on me, even though I 
I did the thing with Polly. Awesome. Oh shit, that's right. You promised to teach him the secrets of Yowie. He bows to you. Ohio, because I'm a Sui Sensei. Oh. I'm learning. Wait, I gotta do that. Ohio, good I'm a Sui Sensei. I'm learning Japanese so as to make this more authentic. I'm ready for my first lesson. You know nothing about teaching Yaoi. You kind of just draw naked dudes snuggling and hope it turns people on. But Liam won't buy that. He thinks you're a Yaoi master. You've got to teach him something. He's right here waiting. Okay, think. What's the first lesson of Yaoi? Is it big hands? Yaoi is all about tenderness. For our first lesson, we will practice advanced cuddling. Draw me like one of your French girls. Okay. Uh, this could be charm. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. This one's a terrible joke. Draw me like one of your French girls. It's just, it's a bad joke. This one... I mean, this one actually gets him drawing. But no, let's do, let's... Ooh, ooh, hemming and hawing. I'm doing the bottom one. Draw me like one of your French girls. Oh, crap. Oh, nuggets. Oh, I really wanted to succeed at this path. You strip naked so that Liam can draw you in your full glory. Right in front of about 10 of your classmates. And judging by their giggling, you probably should have spent more time at the gym. Wow. This is like that nightmare where I'm naked at school. Except instead of me, it's you. And it's real life. I'm not sure whether that's better or worse. But I don't feel like I'm learning a lot about Yaoi right now, so I'm just going to go. Oh. Sugar. Congratulations! By the end of the day, your naked ass will be an internet celebrity. You lose two charm and one smarts. Y'all, I tried to be bold and I beefed it. Oh man. Let's go. I'm so disappointed. Maybe Coach can make me feel better. You're hoping to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach seems to have a different idea. What's this? Eating regular food again? Fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch, sure. <laughs> but you're forgetting the most important food group of all. Dietary supplements. Don't you worry now. Oh, Coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It would be rude to turn him down, and who knows? Maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds up two pill bottles. All right, Palomino Gold 25 Horse Supplement for a shiny coat and luxurious mane. A completely black bottle emblazoned with a Chinese character for party time. Okay. <sighs> we blew the Yaoi plot. I'm so bummed. It's one of my favorites. I'm just going to drink, eat all these mystery pills. You swallow the entire bottle of mystery pills before Coach can stop you. Oh, slow down there, champ. The old woman who sold me these vitamins told me they were basically poison. I bought them anyway because we all know whatever doesn't kill you makes you... You wake up 36 hours later in the middle of an impassioned speech to the student council about dolphin sex. You have no idea what happened in those 36 hours, but you have a new tattoo and everyone keeps calling you Deep Six Nine. You gain four fun. Aww. Maybe I'll unlock a new plot. Oh, Maybe go. I'll just see what happens. Um. Well, I guess let's go to the bathroom. Oh. Uh-oh. Are you recharging or is this like doing drugs in the bathroom? There's her. There's her little bolts. Zing, zing, zing. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. You're hanging out with Polly afterwards, and she's about to show you her latest dumb tattoo, and suddenly... Hey, my love. 
Hmm, how do I want to do his voice this time? I'm gonna try. We'll see if see if I can get get posh. Never fear, my lady. I will save you from this lascivious Cretan. Ugh, it's the interdimensional prince, and he's apparently here to block your metaphorical cock. Ugh. Whoa, you're so sparkly. Are those tearaway pants? Sadly, they are not, my queen. My fashion sense does not operate on the same ethereal plane as your own. Well, I am persistently on fleek. I died on fleek, so I am cursed to roam the earth forever, eternally on fleek. This, this is the exact on fleekness which I seek. For you see, madame, I am in need of a fashionista such as yourself to plan the ultimate wedding. Maybe he should be French. Ours. Huh? Ours? This could be bad. You know Polly's not above getting married as a one-off joke. You've got to stop this madness. Throw a party so dope, Polly doesn't want to travel to another dimension. A party with sex layers. Nope, sex lasers. That's different. Sex layers. Ah, uh, instead of layers of fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, marry the prince yourself right now. That sounds like bold. I'm gonna throw a party. Yeah, it's so fun. You steal the sex lasers from your school's highly controver controversial physics lab and get the party started. Great Zorblins of Galaxia. Oh, no. Great Zorblins of Galaxia. I did not know you had such sick parties in this dimension. It's party time! Yeah, boy! This school is nationally ranked in the field of parties. Particle physics. Uh-huh. Get it? Oh, hey, Zumki! How you doing? I don't know what kind of snooty soirees you've got over there in the snooze dimension, but here at Spooky High, we have sex with coherent light. I'm truly humbled by the heartiness of your party. I shall return to my dimension and lament the fact that it is a total party wasteland. His accent is all over the place. Just ignore him for now. I don't care. You don't even notice the prince leaving because you're too busy humping a laser. You gain two boldness and one fun. Lasers of fear. Pew pew. Pew boo. Boo pew. Let's go. Boop you. Ah ha ha. Okay. Let's see. Um. We're kind of hoping Polly starts to like us, so let's go to the bathrooms again and get a little, get a little more bold. That day you skip class and just to hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny big eyed turtle with your bare hands. That monstrous act would instantly give you 500 boldness. But come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep two boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. Like a boss. You're admiring yourself in the mirror when Principal Giant Spider strolls in. Moments later, Polly and Liam enter in a panic. Whoa. Did you just see the principal come in here? Huh. No, we're done for. Unless, which stall did they go into? <laughs> that one? That's that's where we <laughs> hid all of our molly for the upcoming music festival. Okay, Liam. Be cool. It's fine. As long as he doesn't check the toilet tank for some weird reason. <laughs> From the stall, you hear the principal say, And now to check the toilet tank, as I always do before using the toilet. Curses! What's this, says the principal? A plastic baggie full of small white pills? Could this be drugs? Principal Giant Spider bursts from the stall, clutching the bag in his dreadful fangs. Unacceptable, he chitters. Before you've even had time to make a plan, you hear yourself saying, Those aren't drugs, they're... Tiny spider eggs. We're raising spiders from babies because we love them so much. An illusion created by the drugs you're on. Oh, well, tiny spider eggs sounds like charm. This could be bold. Our bold is better than our charm. Let's see. 
an illusion. It's all it oh, so bold. Principal Giant Spider stops mid-stride. But, but I don't remember taking any drugs. Is all, is all of this a hallucination? Who am I? He says, and he looks down at his eight hairy legs. Oh shit, what the fuck is this? He said. I'm a giant spider? No, you're not, dude. You're just a garden gnome who's super high on some bad shit. Yes, you're our boon companion, Tipsy Tom, and you love gardening. Mind over matter, Tom. Mind over matter. But the principal will not be calmed. He skitters from the bathroom, screaming. He may never know his true identity again. Well, you know what's even better? He totally dropped the drugs. You gain two fun and one boldness. Well, gosh. Don't do drugs, kids. Right? Okay, time again for the wolf pack. You puff yourself up, hoping to look as big and tough and sporty as possible as you take your seat next to the wolf pack. Hey, you! You know what it means that you took a seat at the wolf pack's table? Well, it probably means that you don't care that much about defining which love interest you're pursuing, and or that table was already taken. It means you're now one of us! One of us! One of us! All right, you get it. I'm not going to say it three times. Don't get us wrong. The second lunch is over, we will 100% go back to hating you because you're weak and not at our level, brah. But for now, you might as well enjoy living your best werewolf life to the max. Sometimes we like to stick with just classic blanketly hating all other monsters. But other days, we like to be aggressively inclusive. You caught us on an aggressively inclusive day. Yeah, bro. So, uh, what classic werewolf activity would you like to uh, do in these brief, glorious moments in which you get to be a member of the T-E-A-M-E? -E? Hmm, correcting their spelling of team probably isn't a classic werewolf activity. Better go with something more like, uh, howling at the moon, practicing ikibana, the ancient Japanese art to floral arrangements. Just super wolfy. Uh, let's do Howling at the Moon, because our charm's in the gutter, and this is for charms. Oh, we love Howling at the Moon, but flirting with the moon is even better. Let's go outside and flirt with the moon right now. You head outside where the moon is visible in broad daylight, because why the fuck not? One of us. You kick things off, telling the moon that you're sorry to bother her, but you just wanted to say how much you appreciate the way she controls the tide so gracefully. Wolfy gobble, wolfy gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Uh, sorry. Uh, then the wolf pack steps up and continues in the charming yet respectful tone you set. Hey, moon! Is there a mirror in your pocket? Because I could see myself in your pants. <laughs> Lol, never mind then. Hey, Moon, are you an astronaut? Because your ass is out of this world and I can see myself in that, too. Actually, so you are like, you an astronaut with a mirror in your spacesuit? Suddenly, a piece of paper wafts down from the sky. It appears to be a letter, and it reads, Dear Bren, thank you for respecting my boundaries and not using a crude opening line before we've even gotten to know each other. I'm very flattered and appreciative. Thank you again, the Moon. Huh, I guess maybe it's a good idea to be respectful to women and treat them like people. Even when sometimes they're the moon and not people. Yeah, being respectful to women is the best. Let's get some pussy by being considerate and respectful. Oh! And with that, they're off. You hear laughter and look over to see Vera and Polly deep in conversation. A letter from the moon? Classic. I can't believe they fell for it. The only thing better than a good prank at someone else's expense is a prank that also teaches valuable lessons about being slightly less douchey. Slightly less douchey. Baby steps. Ah, uh, well that makes way more sense than the moon actually writing a letter. But you still gain for charm for not being disgusting. Huzzah! I'm so charming. And it's the last day. I'm so, I'm still so bummed that we dropped our yaoi plot. We, we beat, oh, it's so sad. All right, what do we suck at? 
We're not terribly smart, but I think we're gonna ask Polly to prom. Uh, boldness, creativity, charm, fun. Uh, let's go to the bathroom one last time. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. On the way there, you run into Mamimi, the Oni girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It's crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Piranha seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, oop, nope, caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness. Well, it wasn't bad at all. You gain two boldness, thank Mamimi, and proceed to the bathrooms. To just, like, have horrible diarrhea, because, uh, energy drinks do that to- Well, everything- Everything does that. Sorry. TMI. Nope, it's-, it's I'm that kind of streamer. You're probably gonna hear me belch one day. You see Miranda, Polly, Vera, and Damien all crowding around the bathroom mirror. Can't a monster take a shit in peace at the school? Ha, huh, your brows are just short of being on fleek. They're like one milliliter- Millimeter off- off fleek. Wow, let me start over. Hmm, your brows are just short of being on fleek. They're like one millimeter off fleek. Maybe your snakes got in the way. Pathetic. This coming from someone whose face is see-through. How can we tell if that's your highlight or the headlights of an oncoming train? Ugh, lame. Oh, please. You wouldn't know a good contour if it punched you in the throat. And a really good contour can actually do that. I like to start with a palette of complementary colors for my skin tone. Blood red, baby flesh pink, bloodshot crimson, and then do a basic blend with a soft boiled chimera egg. Indeed, good belt is its own, own entertainment. Ah, uh, Polly is speechless for a moment. Vera is speechless for a moment. What? It's called technique, fuckers. Doing amazing makeup is like punching someone's face with beauty. I just do not see the use in putting so much time and energy into painting one's face. Is that not what we all have makeup slaves for? Mary, no. At least we know we're both more competent than Miranda. And worse than me. Not that that's saying much of anything. There needs to be a way of settling who's the best at makeup. Both Vera and Polly look expectantly at you. Visit the dungeons of Linicom. Linkom. Sumerian god of makeup. Wherein lies the legendary airy. Blah, 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 blah. The legendary orb of Lincoln, which coincidentally can tell who's the best at makeup. I'm wondering if this is some kind of reference that I don't get because I am not a makeup person. Make up this potato to see who can produce the prettiest potato. Who's the prettiest potato? This seems bold. Let's be bold. Let's, let's see what happens. So bold! What? Fuck yeah, dungeon time! Yeah, sure. This sounds super stupid and irresponsible. Just my jam. Not mine. What are you, a chicken? Plop, plop, plop. Chickens don't make that sound. But okay, let's go to those stupid dungeons so that stupid orb can tell you I'm better than you at makeup. Yeah, I love dungeons. I'm coming too. I don't do dungeons. Dungeons are for commoners and for people with that weird leather-based sense of fashion. Bye! Damien, Vera, Polly, and you enter the dungeons and live all kinds of magic adventures until you finally manage to get to the Orb of Lincoln. Hey you, Mr. Orb! Tell us which of us is best at makeup. The orb illuminates itself with an eerie, dim purple light. A voice comes from the depth of your own hearts. Who's the best of you at makeup? It's Damien. Bye. The orb levitates over your heads and implodes on itself, as you do. No, Damien, you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, bye, losers. 
Well, I guess we'll never know who's the best of us at makeup. Yeah, but who cares? Dungeon crawling has been gr a great bonding experience. Now I appreciate you more. And you too, Bren. Agree. I appreciate you two more as well. Not Damien. He can be a jerk sometimes. A makeup genius jerk. I changed that because there were too many twos together. You dungeon crawl your way out of the dungeon, making your experience extra bonding. Great! You gain two fun and one boldness. Alright, we're gonna see if Polly likes us enough to go to prom with us. Hey, Polly, you seem pretty easygoing. Hey, Boo! Hey, Boo! Look at how cute we go! We're so matchy ma- Whoa. Dude, my waist. This is- Whoever put me together did it wrong. That's... Yeah, that's not... That's not how legs work, and that's not how hips work. So, wow. All right, so yeah, sure, let's go to prom. Well, let's go. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the prom with you. The monster prom. Wow! <laughs> not a chance in the world, darling. You're boredom on a stick. You'd bore me to death. And then what would I be? A meta ghost? Pass. Bye. See ya. Aw, oh, man. No way, boo. Yeah, this failure haunted me for the rest of my life. You never moved on, becoming a total and constant failure. I I switched I switched uh points of view there. You never succeeded at anything again. I made it too personal. I took it too to too to heart. Except for that time you won at Monsters Got Talent. But your talent was being a failure at love. It astonished everyone how bad you were at romance. Aw, nuggets. Not any less sad, though. Aw, y'all. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Look at how many new events and outcomes I got. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to unlock everything, and that includes the ones where I suck. So we're getting it. They didn't install a waste. Yeah, that's good. They just, they're like, yeah, yeah this just connects to where the spine goes, right? That's, that's how it is. That's how bodies work. Especially the lady bodies. And her thigh gap was like as wide as one of her legs. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Polly's drug cooking skills proved useful, and she became a chemist for the pharmaceutical industry. But in her free time, she still cooks the real shit. Her greatest inventions so far are watermelon-flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. Yeah, watermelon stuff flavored... Watermelon flavored stuff is not... It's... I don't like it. It's too cloying. It's too sweet, but like sweet... Sweet with a, an overlay of of fustiness. I don't know. Maybe I just eat bad watermelon. Scott became an athlete. Not so long ago, he won a prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. Oh, he's the goodest of boys. Good, good boy. Miranda got a job being princess of her kingdom, which was actually kind of her job already. Well, you don't see her complaining about it. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yeah, we were ready to start. What if I told you that the song was gonna end? Bop, bop, bop. It's every time it's different buttons, or it's the same buttons every time, but I haven't got ooh oh only one new image it's just gonna i love i love the fan art but it's it's a big bummer when the only thing i unlock is fan art because i did bad i did a bad job ooh uh oh he's smoking in school he's a bad boy too oh he needs to get his tail looked at it's like dissolving i know it's like the cray paw look it's pretty good that's pretty good Look, you can see a bunch of people in the background. You can recognize who they are. Yeah, I just, I like it. 
I like this style. It's very smudgy and like uh, gritty. And he's got his little two button jacket on, which I admire. Chase Fox. Well, good job, Chase Fox. All right. Well, that's all for today. Oh, I'm drunk on you. Okay, back. All right. Yeah, watermelon. Blech. Blech. All right, well, that's our adventure for today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, and everybody take care and be safe. Alrighty, bye for now.